Okay. Hey everyone, I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scott's You Business, and today we're here with David Gold, who is the CEO of Datpix, who is currently building out the FIO protocol. And uh, if you could just start by telling us a little bit about yourself, that'd be awesome. Sure. Um, so I've uh, I've been in the venture and entrepreneur side for a long time. Engineer by education, was a dot com entrepreneur. Built and ran a B2B procurement company uh, during that day, raised over 25 million in venture capital, had an MA event after the crash. So we actually got smaller and profitable. Uh, became an angel investor, became a VC, was general partner of a VC fund for over 11 years, jumped in to lead our blockchain investments several years back and went down the crypto rabbit hole and uh, quickly saw that uh, in one sense, there were some similarities to blockchain during the early days of the World Wide Web and that I I saw the technology and saw, wow, this could be really disruptive and game-changing, like the web, but not terribly different from when I uh, opened my Mosaic web browser on dial-up. I said, this technology really sucks today. <laughs> so who's going to fix this? Who's going to make this really user-friendly? And started looking around to see what was being done and uh, honestly couldn't find a solution I believe was going to solve the UX issues. And that led to the genesis of the ideas behind the field protocol. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, definitely in the the preliminary stages where like today people who use the internet don't really need to know what's underlying like in all the protocols underlying and they don't and they're not aware of them. And that's where we need to take blockchain technology to the point where the average person doesn't need to be aware and they can still use it fluently. And I think that's that's really important. So so how busy are, uh, is your day now? Like with everything that you've got going on, what does your day look like on an average day? Uh, it's pretty crazy and it seems like it never stops, but yeah, we've got so much going on. Uh, we're getting ready to launch our test net in the next several weeks. We launched our few address pre-sale several weeks ago, um, closed our, our, uh, series A venture round led by Binance in August. Um, so yeah, there's uh, a lot going on as we move towards a uh, mainnet launch, uh, in the first part of, uh, of next year. Yeah, absolutely. So. For people who aren't aware of, of what DAPIX is or FIO, can you give a bit of an introduction to both of those? Yeah, so DAPIX is just the venture back company that's building the FIO protocol. And FIO stands for the Foundation for Interwallet Operability. FIO's goal in terms of a result standpoint is to deliver the kind of results that HTTP did for the internet uh, for blockchain. And that is to create an industry standard uh, usability uh, protocol that acts as a service layer and sits between wallets and enables an entirely different user experience that's impossible today, um, including uh, out of the gate with the first iteration, uh, the ability for users to not even have to know or see what a public address is, the ability to send requests for payments. Today, everything in crypto is send only. Um, mm. And most Transactions of value in the real world start with a request, a bill, an order card, a check, an invoice, or all requests for payments. That concept of decentralized requests for payments doesn't exist. FIO will enable that. Uh, and the ability to include data in an identical way across all tokens or coins, a note, an order card, an invoice. So all three of those will be the three initial capabilities that FIO will enable. And it will enable that in existing wallets, exchanges, and crypto payment processing platforms. We are none of those. We help make all of those better or the glue that sits between all of those via an industry standard uh, communication protocol. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because um, of the very few similar projects that I know are doing this, they lack um, interoperability with a bunch of different wallets. Like they only work with one or two wallets and they're very, you know, not well known and not widely used. So it's like, a huge uh, resistance point for people. So I think it's really key that it can work with everything. So people don't have because people shouldn't have to change what they're using for interoperability. Obviously, it should solve that so that they shouldn't have to do things differently. And then it, it can just make a smoother experience. So right. and, that, and that's why we have, you know, we built this from the beginning with industry involvement. We have 28 industry and partners. Uh, including companies like uh, Binance and Binance's Trust Wallet. Binance is, is one of our investors. Um, uh, we have companies like Edge and Coinomi uh, and uh, Shapeshift and Bitcoin.com uh, and, and Garter Wallet and Atomic Wallet. And the list just goes on and on and is growing all the time. And, then, and the foundation itself is an industry-guided nonprofit foundation 
which will ultimately be the center of gravity for the protocol once uh, our company uh, releases all the code into mainnet and 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 uh, open sources it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that'll be a extremely like a, a, a big push to the mainstream and, and mass adoption and really streamlining all of that. So um, for the people who are starting to take advantage of other domains out there, like other domain solutions, how does FIO stand out and how is it doing it differently? I know obviously you're working with a lot more wallets, but uh, can you speak to that a little bit more? Yeah. So if you mean, we say other domain solutions, you mean other naming solutions. So in some of them, yeah, talk yeah. About domains. One of the things, you know, FIO addresses are not web domains. They they are not a web naming system. Um, there are a couple other efforts out there um, that just deal with the concept of naming. Um, FIO is much more than just naming. Um, out of the box, it is payment requests and cross-chain metadata. Uh, in the future, it'll be things like multi decentralized multi-sig routing. The concept of recurring payments in a decentralized way becomes po possible. Reverse lookup of non-fungible tokens that are self-sovereign. A whole bunch of things that FIO can do. Um, so, you know, naming systems that are out there, uh, they most of them are trying to be very broad and actually be decentralized website naming, wallet naming, all those sorts of things. Um, we may actually enable in the future paths for some of those to work as aliases on FIO because we really, FIO doesn't care. Um, ultimately, it's about delivering the actual workflow and usability that leads up to transaction and in the future, some of it that happens after transactions um, is what FIO is, is all about. So, you know, there is overlap at the naming part, but, but, but FIO does, his vision is different than just naming. It's bigger than just, just naming. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like you guys take it way further than just that. So, so all the other, all the other projects that are just trying to scratch that surface are only just doing a tiny portion of what you guys are already, uh, yeah. already doing. Yeah, in some sense, and then in some areas, they're, they they at least talk about doing things that at least we don't envision doing. For example, the concept of decentralized web domains is not part of what the FIO protocol is about. FIO is all about making the process of moving decentralized value uh, extraordinarily user friendly, and so that doesn't fit with the con the concept of decentralized web web domains is a very different uh, category of needs and desires, and not something mm -hmm. we would have to do. Uh, but is something that other, you know, some of the other naming systems are focused on. We actually think that that's a conflation of two different things. Um, decentralized websites need to be um, completely open and open text by nature. Anybody who wants to go to a website needs to be able to type it in and resolve it to a DNS uh, behind the scenes uh, to go to it. That's not true with wallet names. There's a lot of good reasons why you won't don't want necessarily want everybody in the world to be able to resolve your wallet name to your public addresses. Um, there's privacy things that need to be done, uh, that we've taken into account with the FIO protocol. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and, um, so, so what are some of the big updates coming soon for FIO? I know you talked a little bit about that, but if you can expand on that a little more. Yeah. So the, the, the biggest next thing, we just launched our FIO address presale addresses.fio.foundation. So people can pre-reserve FIO addresses and bid on, on, on FIO domains. Um, but the next big thing is we'll be launching our first version of our test net here in the next several weeks. Uh, the APIs and SDKs will become available. So uh, companies and people won't have to ask our permission to do test integrations to a test net. Uh, and then after that, we'll go to a phase two where we actually start to uh, invite in outside parties to run nodes on the test net as well uh, after that. So those are the next big things for the community um, that are going to be going to be coming. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's huge. Um, so, so where, where do you feel that, uh, FIO fits in with other similar projects? I know we, we just sort of touched on that, but how do you feel it sort of, uh, fits in with the other projects that are doing this or maybe how it's very uniquely different from other projects? So we're not, we don't think there's any other project that's doing exactly what we're doing. Um, and when you think about, you know, a service layer that handles workflow messaging communication about the sending of value in other chains, but does not send the value. That happens from a technical perspective the same way it does today. From a user experience perspective, it happens very differently. But technically, the, the end result is the same. Uh, I mean, I, I would say we're not aware of any other project that talks about that kind of goal. Uh, the, the only overlap tends to be at that concept of having to have a human readable wallet name as part of that construct. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and, you know, so there is no human readable wallet naming system that is clearly recognized as the naming system. So at this point with what we're doing to make Theo functional, we have to provide that as well. And as I mentioned, we, we actually uh, may have roadmap items that provide aliases to other naming systems. Um, and ultimately there may end up being just one naming system. And if so, you know, that's the naming system that Theo will use. That might be Theo addresses. It might, maybe it's not. Um, but that doesn't, doesn't matter where that is. All the rest of the workflow around the transactions of value needs to have its own industry standard protocol to enable two disparate wallets or a wallet and a crypto payment processing platform to actually enable that kind of capability between them. They have to have a standard that they agree on and how that's going to happen. In order to send a request for payment from one wallet to another, you can't do that today because the underlying blockchain protocols don't have that capability. Uh, and even if they did, they would each work differently, right? And from a user standpoint, the concept of things working differently becomes very confusing. So having the standardized homogeneous service layer that abstracts away the underlying differences between blockchains is, creates that user-friendly environment. And it makes, you know, sending a request for Bitcoin identical to sending it for, you know, Litecoin or or EOS or, or any other token or coin or just simply sending those becomes identical as well. Yeah, yeah. And that definitely really streamlined it for making it a lot easier for people uh, to to get involved. I feel like this is exactly what what we need for the people who really struggle with you know, understanding blockchain and how crypto works to really get those people in. And, and that's where mass adoption comes. Um, so where do you see FIO going in the next year, in the next five years? What is the what is the roadmap generally look like? Yeah, so mainnet launch first part of next year uh, we will continue to grow uh, the FIO members that uh, are working on integrating the protocol. Uh, you know, we're now getting users engaged and expect to have a large number of users who have pre-registered FIO addresses before mainnet and are eager and waiting for that cape functionality. Uh, after mainnet, it's all about uh, you know usage and adoption, right? And getting uh, users to utilize it within their wallets, which, which we're highly confident they will as soon as it's available, because it's just anybody who's seen the demos, which are on the FIO.foundation website, um, go, wow, that is a much better experience. Um, so that's, that's the roadmap through the next year. Launch mainnet. Uh, drive forward with with adoption with the ultimate goal, quite honestly, of making it the industry standard for for this service layer. Uh, and our goal, you know, we view FIO as not competing with any other blockchain. You know, a lot of the blockchains out there view themselves as competitors with each other in terms of what they're trying mm -hmm. to do. Uh, FIO is its own self-standing delegated proof of stake protocol. Our, our goal is we don't see ourselves as competing with any other blockchains. We want to make them all better. Uh, we want to provide a service layer that that quite honestly enables them to not have to worry about the usability layer um, so they can focus on the critical work they're doing at the at the uh, infrastructure and plumbing layers, which still has a lot left to be done, right, in terms of improvements. Yeah. Um, so that's that's our vision and, and our goal. Awesome. Awesome. So. Um, what is the what is the current user base size looking like? Like I know you guys just recently started doing uh, pre sales, but uh, wh what's that looking like so far? You know, so we literally just launched the pre sale in the last several weeks, and we've gotten a lot of response. I I don't remember the last numbers on uh, the number of domains that are under auction, but there's a lot, and few addresses are getting registered. And a number of our wallet partners are gear gearing up to to run some pretty cool uh, promotions for their users around it. Um, awesome. so it, it's been great, um, you know, and it's, it's early, but, uh, people are registering for something that they can't actually use right now because it's pre-reserving, right. But it enables them to be ready to use it at, at mainnet launch. And that's, uh, that's, that's, what's cool. And that we've already got, you know, field members that are doing an initial integration of the protocol to enable this. Um, I don't know if that's ever happened before that you actually have industry partners doing an integration with a protocol for actual real world users while it was still a testnet phase uh, because they need to enable the key generation even though the users don't need to know that's what it is uh, they aren't told mm -hmm. that they just click on a button or a link in their wallet uh, to uh, basically generate the key pair that's associated with the FIO address they're reserving uh, but they don't see that address or even know that's what's going on but our wallets are already doing that integration uh, out of the box there that's how how, how much support we have from the industry for what for, for what we're doing here. 
Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I don't know of any other projects that have that much development going on in such an early phase. Um, so is uh, are you or any of the team going to be attending any events uh, this year or next year? What is what is what does that schedule look like? Yeah, as far as upcoming events, uh, we are sponsoring uh, WCC in Vegas uh, week after next and San Francisco Blockchain Week. Um, so I'll be at San Francisco Blockchain Week. I'm on a panel there um, and uh, two of our team members, our chief decentralization officer and our director of marketing will be at WCC. Um, so yeah, those are two upcoming events that we will definitely be at. Uh, and I likely am going to be at Block Show in Singapore as well. But uh, those first two will have a decent presence at. Awesome. Awesome. And, and, and um, we'll, we'll be giving away free FIO addresses there. So attendees at those events will actually be able to get a, uh, they'll get a little card and insert with their uh, swag bag and they can use that to scan a QR code and get free FIO addresses. Awesome. Yeah. So definitely got to go and uh, attend for sure. Um, so where can everyone go and learn more about uh, F the FIO protocol? Yeah, so FIOFIO.foundation is the website. There's explainer videos, there's demo videos. We have our full white paper and roadmap there. Um, really a complete set of information. All the partners are listed there. All the press and news is listed there. Um, and there's links to the FIO address pre-sale site, which is a separate site from, from FIO.foundation as well. Awesome, awesome. And is there anything else that you'd like to share before we uh, end this off? Um, no, I mean, I think we covered most everything. I guess I would say to, to viewers, imagine a world where, you know, the process of moving decentralized value around was as simple as sending an email um, or sending a request to somebody and saying, hey, send me that, you know, 10 bucks. Um, that's what FIO enables and will enable a whole bunch of other great capabilities as well. We truly are revolutionizing uh, uh, the usability of crypto and that's going to be key to enabling mass adoption um you know if we ever want crypto to be used in commerce and for real utility it has to be easy to use and get back to the internet example it was around for over a decade and its growth rate was pretty darn slow and there you know there was a decent number of people using the internet before before http and the world wide web but the growth rate was pretty slow and what mm -hmm. enabled growth to explode was the World Wide Web made it easy and intuitive to use, right? All of a sudden, yeah. the average person on the street could start to interact with it because all they had to do was point and click, right? That's yeah. all they had to do. Uh, before that, you were dealing with Telnet and Qt FTP and all kinds of funky protocols and different apps and entering an IP addresses, and it was not something the average person would do. That's where we're at with blockchain today. We're still in that, yeah. in that phase. Absolutely. Awesome. So if, if people want to get ahead of the curve, got to go check out FIO. Thank you so much for uh, for doing this. I think I learned a little bit too. So um, so yeah, make sure to go check out FIO and uh, thank you so much for, for being on. Thanks for your time.